Hi everyone, today we're doing Lab 7, Paragraph Recognition. Special thanks to Saurabh Chandra for work on this lab. In this lab we will do a couple of things. We'll move from training on synthetic lines to training on real handwriting lines. This will be introduced um, in the IM Lines data module. We'll move from training on just lines to training on whole paragraphs and introduce the IM Paragraphs data module as well as the IM Synthetic Paragraphs data module. We'll automatically save the best model from a set of experiments, and we'll also introduce the Paragraph Text Recognition class to load the model and run inference that we can use in production. So before we get started, we're using slightly newer versions of PyTorch Lightning and WNB, so just make sure to run Make Pip Tools to update your setup. And we're also using um, Git LFS to store the model weights so install with git lfs install. Um, there's a few new files. There's a folder called artifact, paragraph text recognizer. We have the config, model, um, PyTorch weights, and the command that was used to generate it. We have IAM paragraphs, IAM synthetic paragraphs, and IAM original and synthetic paragraphs in the data sets. We have a new model called Resna Transformer. And we have this new module called Paragraph Text Recognizer. As well as in the training, we have Save Best Model. So the first thing we introduce is this um, ResNet Transformer, which is the same transformer model as LineCNN Transformer. But instead of using our kind of homebrewed LineCNN, we're using the um, Torch Vision provided <laughs> ResNet. So we can check it out in ResNetTransformer.py. Let's check it out. So it's lab 7, text recognizer models, resna transformers.py. Same variables um, that we can set, but instead of the line CNN for the encoder, we're using the resna, and we're using the torch vision models resna 18. We're not using pre trained weights. Uh, we could, but our data is pretty different than natural images. It's all grayscale images. So we might as well just train it from scratch. And then we'll exclude the last two layers of um, the ResNet, which average pool over the whole image, and then um, add a linear layer to go to ImageNet classes. So instead of doing that, we'll just output batch size by ResNet dimension, which is 512, by the kind of height and width of what the ResNet outputs, which actually reduces it by a factor of 32 of the input image size, because it goes through a number of stride 2 cons. Um, another thing to pay attention to in this ResNet transformer is, so yeah, we run the input through ResNet, which actually we need to duplicate the number of channels in the input data, because ResNet expects three channel input images, we have one channel input images, so we just replicate it across that dimension. And then we generate the ResNet dimensional output, we project it to the embedding sized output so that it matches our uh, decoder transformer, what that expects. And furthermore, we encoded, or we position encode this ResNet output, and there's one thing special about that, which is that we're using the positional encoding image um, class, which is also new. So let's take a look at that. So we actually um, add 2D encodings. So in a normal transformer positional encoding, you have a sequence that you're adding positional encoding to. But here we have basically a two-dimensional sequence, right? also known as an image. And so we want to add two-dimensional positional encodings. So that's an encoding that respects the x-axis and the y-axis. And that's what we do here. If you want details of this, you can read the code. You can also read um, a paper that describes our handwriting recognition model um, over at Turnitin, written by Sumit Singh, so you can get the PDF there. 
Okay. So that is basically that for Resna Transformer. Um, there's a new data called IM lines. We actually introduced it in the previous lab, but we didn't train on it. So just in case you forgot what it looks like, we can look at it using this 03 look at IM lines notebook. And it's you know real handwriting from a number of different writers. Um, and IM lines, this is line-based data, 56 pixels high, 1,024 pixels um, long. So we can train on this data set. Python training run experiment, we'll log the WNB, we'll use all the GPUs, and um, we can use line CNN transformer, we can use ResNet transformer, and if we use ResNet transformer, we can see what that looks like. So you got one decrease of validation loss, a little bit of a plateau, and then a second decrease. And the loss goes down to 0.2. The character error rate goes down to around 9.4%. And in fact, if you kept the training, uh, the loss and the, and the character error rate might keep improving further. We cut it off here, so we got final test character error rate of 11.7%, which is pretty decent. You can get down to like 5% character error rate. Um, with this setup, you just have to kind of tweak the parameters. So now that we confirm that IM lines works, let's move on to whole paragraphs. And to look at the paragraphs, we have a new data set called IM Paragraphs. We can look at it in this notebook. So there are um, 1,000 images in train, 260 in val, 230 in test. And each image is 576 by 640 pixels. And the max sequence length is 682. So let's take a look at some training images. So this is the label, start token, end token, and then the text, and there's a new line um, character basically that we render here, and our transformer model will actually learn to reproduce. So this is the Palace Cinema at Buckley near Chester will be, okay, great. And then there's data augmentation. You can see the, um, the text region kind of moves around the image and is like skewed, and there's contrast changes and stuff like that. In testing, none of that happens. It's always perfectly centered, and um, the contrast is not really messed with. Same as IM lines. Okay, so that is IM paragraphs. And there's another data set we um, introduced because there's actually not that much data here, right? Um, we made a synthetic paragraph data. We called it I am synthetic paragraphs. You can take a look at the file if you want. But here we basically just generate our own paragraphs, uh, almost 20,000 of them, from individual lines. So we just stitch together lines, any number of lines, um, up to some number, and then we generate the label and we encode it, or, you know, we position the resulting paragraph somewhere in the image. So this gives our model like a lot more data to kind of learn how to, how to, um, how to read. Let's go back to the readme. So we have IM paragraphs with the test, you know, with the actual original data. We have IM synthetic paragraphs, which we can also use for beefing up our training data set. And then at training time, we want to use both of them, right? We want to use both the synthetic paragraphs and the real paragraphs. So we have an IAM original and synthetic paragraphs data set, which is here. Text recognizer data, IAM original and synthetic paragraphs. And this is kind of interesting. We basically just instantiate both the IAM paragraphs and the IAM synthetic paragraphs, and then prepare both of them, set up both of them, and then in our own setup, we say concat data set, the, the two of them. And concat data set is something that Torch gives us. So it's basically just all you have to do um, and things just work. So that's quite nice. 
if we train on it, I am original and synthetic paragraphs with the resina transformer. Um, it will eventually get down to 17% test error rate. And that's in just a thousand epochs. Uh, this is actually on eight 2080 TIs. So this is quite a time consuming training run. And it looks like it would keep improving if we kept the training, but we just cut it off at around a thousand epochs. And we're logging the predictions so we can take a look. They will not work in union if physical power, spiritual power, and visionary power. Okay, and then this is the prediction. They will not work in union if physical power, spiritual power, and visionary power is not united. So it's basically perfect here. Um, and that's on the validation set. And then here is some test examples. So he put up for the night at the admiral's head, comma, that famous. Okay, so he put up for the right at the admiral's period head. So there's some mistakes, but overall it's 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 really great. Um, yeah, so that is around 17% character error rate. Okay, so let's say we ran some number of experiments, and so we have um, our runs, we have our project, we have the user who's, who's running these experiments. We now have a script called training save best model.py where we can run it, give it the entity, so that's the, the user who ran the experiments, um, and then the data class that it trained on, and it will look in the project find the best run by validation loss, and you can overwrite, overwrite the metric that you used to find the best model by providing metrics. You could find the best model by validation character error rate or test character error rate or whatever you want. But either way, it will actually query WNB and then download the best model um, to you. So, after you have saved the best model, it will, or you know, it finds the best model and it saves it to a new location, which is in text recognizer, artifact, paragraph text recognizer. And now we store config JSON, the PyTorch weights, and the command that was used to generate it. The config JSON is just all the basically hyperparameters that we use to train it. Not all of these are actually kind of hyperparameters for the model. It's just all of the argument, um, command line arguments that are run experiment.py script accepts, which includes some PyTorch lightning training things like gradient clip val, stuff like that. But it also includes our actual hyperparameters like, like uh, transformer number of heads, transformer dimension and so on. So the idea is we're able to recreate this exact model if we check out you know, the git commit that generated it and run this command, we should get this exact model back with this config. Um, and the reason we save it there is because we also introduce text recognizer, paragraph text recognizer. So let's go look at that. So this module is basically for recognizing text in an image. Um, and what it does is it basically loads the data that we need to kind of know about so that we have the mapping of indices to characters. Um, we get the transform that we use to train. So that means like how do we actually convert um, a Python imaging library image to a PyTorch tensor. We load the config, we instantiate the model with the config and the lib model with the config and the weight that we stored. 
and then we switch the model into evaluation mode so that like dropout is not active and um, uh, in j just in general everything is in evaluation mode and gradients aren't um, computed and so on and then we have a predict method which takes an image file name opens the image resizes it down to the size that um, our model expects transforms it to a tensor runs it through the model which gets the prediction um, activations and then converts that over to a string and then returns the string and then we can look at those predictions in a notebook called O4B look at paragraph predictions and here we go so these are trained val, trained val samples so I read as it is with so much of our life already in a predetermined groove and then the model read one s it is with so much of our life already in a predetermined grove and so on it's pretty close this is train valo so this is stuff that the model has seen in training so let's scroll down to test so these images um, the model has never seen <coughs> i read she was engaged to nigel had been for two years sometimes they talked on the theme of when we get married she was in gagged to Ugged, had been for though years. Some DSCs they balked on the on behem of once we go married. So this is like seventeen percent character error rate. You can tell it's not super great. Um, and we are able to get much better. We can get sub ten percent character error rate if we if we train more and with different hyperparameters. But it's still pretty good. Um, So one interesting failure mode, by the way, of the model is repeating lines. So here it's, I guess it says, Gay went out to the waiting taxi and then found that in the excitement of meeting Gavin, she had left her son. Okay. But then here it says, Goy went out to the, okay, whatever. In the excitement of meeting and then the excitement of meeting again. And then, she, and then it repeats the next line, repeats the next line and so on. So this is due to the transformer obviously uses attention and the problem with attention might be that um, it actually gets a little confused about where it's supposed to look next and so it just looked at this line but then it might actually look at the same line again so in order to fix this perhaps we could mess with our position encoding and try to make it a little different so that it's kind of like the positions are more different as you go down um, we could also just increase the number of heads or the number of layers, but we can mess with hyperparameters and try to make this a little better. Okay, so no special homework, but check out the new files. Maybe try training this yourself. And then next time we're gonna add tests for this new recognizer class. We'll add some other tests and um, as was described in the testing lecture. So that is it for lab seven, paragraph recognition. Thank you.